<clears throat> okay, welcome uh, ENC 1102. This is my lecture for tone and style. Now this is the first lecture I'm actually posting up in the uh, website, the Blackboard website. So I wanted to uh, point something out to you. If you do not want the lecture, if you just want the notes, I will make those available also to you. So that's a separate link on the website. It'll just say tone and style, for example. This one is the tone and style lecture. All right, so um, let's talk about what tone and style mean to a story. And they're, um, they kind of go hand in hand because of the way uh, a writer writes. Uh, this picture that I chose for the first slide is actually a really good um, way to convey style and tone. Uh, very briefly, before we get into more detail later, style is the way a, a writer writes, and tone is the overall mood of the story that the reader feels while they're reading it. So let's go into some specifics here. For tone, as I said, tone is a, the tone of a story is the mood that it conveys to the reader. A story could have one overall mood that it makes the reader feel, or it could have several moods throughout the story if it's long enough with different scenes. Uh, usually the tone is the dominant mood of the story, but it can change from scene to scene, as I said. Um, a story's tone and action can sometimes seem like they're opposing each other. For example, there might be a scary scene being described, but the author might describe it as something funny. Um, think of it like horror comedy. Horror comedy is a genre where things that are considered scary are instead played for laughs. That could This could be seen in, in a lot of different movies. Um, the biggest one, one of my favorites, is called Beetlejuice, where the ghosts are kind of trying to scare the people out of the house, but it's not working for them. And a lot of situations that are supposed to be scary, for example, people getting possessed by the ghosts, end up being funny because instead of being possessed to do something scary, they start dancing around the room, right? So, um, for the opposite effect, if it's something that's funny, right? If it's something bright and silly being described as gloomy or depressing, um, think of it like the Adams Family. The Adams Family, their perfect day, a, a, a day that is beautiful to them, is rainy and stormy, but... If it's sunny and bright and cheerful outside, they think it's a terrible day, right? So a story's tone depends on how the writer describes certain actions. Now let's put this into play with a couple of the stories that we read this semester. Uh, take one of the most popular stories we read. A lot of people have been writing about this one, The Telltale Heart. Telltale Heart is written by Edgar Allan Poe, and he is a gothic writer. Basically means... He writes a lot of dark, mysterious uh, stories. And Telltale Heart is no exception. It is a very dark story about a dark subject matter with a man trying to kill um, somebody that he hates or so somebody that he um, can't stand a part of them. Remember, he, he hates the eye. So that overall, the overall tone of that story is dark, is suspenseful, is scary. Um, but take a different story, for example, a &P, the first story that we read this semester. a &P has to do with a, a teenager, we assume, working in a convenience store as a cashier. Now, we could kind of interpret the events that happened in that story where a group of ladies come in, he kind of gawks at them, and then he tries to impress them and it ends up falling flat. We could interpret that as a comedic story, but for me, the story, A uh, and P, the tone is more serious, simply because um, a big factor in that story is the fact that he has to suffer the consequences of his action, which is quitting his job. So it comes off as less comedic and more um, gloomy, or, or at the very least, more... Eh, serious is the best word I can think of. So yes, tone is the mood of the story. Style, something slightly different, is 
the way the writer particularly writes. Uh, this includes the words they use, their imagery, sometimes their tone, their figurative language. Um, here's basically what I mean. You're never going to confuse somebody like Dr. Seuss for somebody like Stephen King. Those are extreme examples, of course, because Dr. Seuss is a children's author and Stephen King is mostly adult author. But if, two, if those two people, let's say we have Stephen King and Dr. Seuss both writing a children's story, they will have different ways of writing that story. And you will never confuse the story written by Dr. Seuss for the one written by Stephen King because they have different styles. You can also just take any uh, popular series and put them together. For example, Harry Potter and something like um, The Hunger Games. Now, both of those are kind of young adult fiction where teenagers are the main characters and they have to overcome some big plot. But not only are those stories different in terms of their genre, Harry Potter is very fantasy and Hunger Games is mostly a dystopian future, but they're also very different in terms of the way that their authors write. Now there's two particular uh, vocabulary words I want you to come away with. The first one is diction. Diction is a, a choice of words. An author's diction can be abstract or concrete, bookish or close to speech. Now, those are a, a few more um, vocabulary words. Let me try to simplify here. If somebody is abstract, it means they're describing a story in a very dreamlike way. Nothing feels concrete. Nothing feels um, like you can really visualize it clearly. However, if a, if a writer's diction is concrete, it means the visuals in your head are perfectly clear. They are describing everything in a real-world way, and you can easily understand how the author is trying to paint this world. Uh, bookish diction basically means that they're very, being very um, academic with the words that they use, meaning uh, very high vocabulary, usually college level at least. Close to speech means that the author is trying to use words that are more familiar to people and more conversational style. So um, the characters in a story that uh, where the author is trying to use close to speech diction are going to talk a lot like um, you might think that you talk with your friends or your family. So they, they're very conversational. Now the last vocabulary word, the last thing we'll talk about in this lesson is minimalism. Minimalism is using a flat, laid-back, unemotional tone and a bare basic style. Uh, basically what that means is you are uh, the author, not you. The author is not trying to describe anything like fancy. They're just trying to tell you uh, the bare minimum details. For example, if I told you the palm tree, that's minimalism because that is just describing the tree. The and maybe I can just throw in a word like the tall the tall palm tree. So the tall palm tree is minimal details. Now I could go into more details, but then it's no longer minimalism. If an author is trying to get you to feel a certain way about a person or an object, then they are not using minimalism. Minimalism is just the facts. All right, that's tone and style. Um, hopefully everybody's being safe out there, and please wash your hands.